lot of my work is very intuitive and very personal. Reflecting on it more recently, I've sort of identified that a lot of my work deals with um, pain, right? Like different levels of pain. And it's tough to talk about that because there are so many awful things happening around the world. But at the same time, I think that it is a universal concept. The themes that your work involves often changes and evolves over time, but I've actually noticed that I've dipped in and out of the same themes back and forth. But I've worked heavily in a certain theme for a while and then felt like I needed to kind of grow up and move beyond that. I found that I almost had these two simultaneous bodies of work that were completely segregated. A lot of that is now sort of meshing. So the imagery has changed and I think sort of matured. Uh, but a lot of things sort of flux back and forth and grow, kind of snowballing into a completely different thing over time. I've lived in Chicago for nine years now. I think being here and being submerged, that's definitely influenced me. It's a big deal to me that I can afford to live in Chicago so I can live in a larger urban area, that I have access to these things, but that it's still very livable and that I can make a living as an artist and working in the arts and being surrounded by a lot of other artists that can live and work here as well and that are fairly successful doing that. It's a space where there are printmaking facilities. There's all of the equipment, the chemicals, and everything needed um, to make prints and all of the different print processes. There's also studios, and then they, they hold classes and things like that there. I started out in 2006 just as an intern volunteering my time when I was in grad school, but then I started teaching classes there a year and a half ago in 2012. I was promoted to assistant director. So I now help run the facility and facilitate things with the space. Printmaking is a handmade process for making artwork. You're doing it from what we call a matrix, from a plate or a screen or something like that. So you start out with this matrix, for example, in etching and talio. You start out with a copper plate or a zinc plate or even a piece of plastic and you etch into the surface and ink it up and you can print multiples from that one thing. There's something very tactile about printmaking. It's a lot more of a physical medium where you're like filing your edges and you're gouging and you're grinding or you're carving or you're graining a stone and things like that that I think are much more physically satisfying. This lifestyle is very different. I work for six to seven different places as a private contract printer or teacher. It definitely takes a lot of scrambling and hustling. The pros of it are that I'm constantly engaged. I actually find I'm a lot more productive when I'm more busy. You're not being graded. You don't have any deadlines. You have to do that for yourself. So I think that that's always the challenge. And so you have to kind of make that happen. I feel like my work actually became much stronger once I started teaching. I've had some really incredible ambitious students who were really into just exploring and pushing the envelope in different ways. Some of them come up with these really interesting backhanded ways of approaching it. I think those discoveries are always really nice and that's actually been very inspiring. I've tried to push myself with printmaking to sort of loosen up and plan less and work more spontaneously with that medium. I have this whole lexicon of imagery that I'm pulling from. The imagery definitely involves a lot of fragmentation. Fragmenting narrative, fragmenting actual parts or elements of figures or animals or objects, um, and sometimes juxtaposing things together in a way that is very open and ambiguous so that it can be read in multiple ways. So while a lot of it transpires from this source of pain and things that I'm sort of meditating about difficulties like 
losing your home or going through a divorce or abuse or a lot of different painful elements. They're vague or ambiguous enough that I think when people see them, they're not beat over the head by my personal experience. They see that element of pain, but then there's plenty of room and space for them to sort of identify their own story or narrative within that. What's important for me is that the work remains very universal for other people to access. A lot of the more recent feedback that I've gotten is that I've finally found that balance of allowing enough room for both my exploration and room for other people to sort of experience that.